tonight. Live from the Inspire Theater in the heart of downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen, Tony Moore, Trey Thomas Perry, Lisa Bonnie Wilson, DJ Lenny Alfonso. <sighs> Quiet again. All right. Welcome to the Downtown Podcast. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, that's good. Good enough. Good enough. Yeah. That's good. So <laughs> we'll get right into it. Whatever. You guys want it? It's fine. Uh, news today. Uh, Apple changed the way that they are going to pay their artists after Taylor Swift sent an open letter to the company uh, dis disapproving of their, uh, their payment program. Uh, the statement read, we are never, ever agreeing to the terms and conditions. <laughs> uh, letters from Taylor Swift are kind of like uh, the drone strikes of the entertainment world, right? OK, yeah. Uh -huh. Permission to Swift. That's a cute joke. That's a cute joke. You don't need to laugh at that. It's fine. No, that was cool. Thank you. <laughs> no, that was good. No, that was good. Yeah. Um, so how's it going? Well, nothing much. Just waiting for a teleprompter. President Obama said, uh, used the N-word in an interview later, earlier this week, which caused quite a stir. Yeah. But in his defense, he was a little excited when he was explaining Magic Mike 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a boy, Tatum, Tatum. Janet Tatum is my boy. Yeah, it was a really weird interview. So there's a new app out that, uh, that helps people break up. You break up with your significant other and you use this a it app. It's called Binder. Binder. Yeah, yeah. So if there's ever a hinder in your Tinder, you can use Binder. <laughs> and then log on to Grinder. No, no. <laughs> Univision is canceled. Ooh. So Univision, they're canceling the Miss USA pageant because Donald Trump said that Mexicans were rapists, druggies, and, uh, and criminals. Oh, no, wait. He was describing Celebrity Apprentice. Laugh. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize about that one. That was a tough one. You um, survived. Yeah, I stuttered. I never had a stuttering problem before. Woof. 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 Okay. So after an investigation, it was discovered that Whole Foods regularly overprices their foods. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. The the investigation was done by you and me every time we go to Whole Foods, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a patient was awarded $500,000 after he accidentally recorded a conversation his doctors were having uh, while he was under for a colonoscopy. Is that right? Yeah, they said a couple of mean things. Uh, apparently, they gave away the ending to uh, this season's Game of Thrones. <laughs> Can't do that. Spoiler alerts are a lot of money. Spoiler alerts. Uh, here's, here's something funny. Did you hear about this? Turns out, when you get red eye, in a pool, it's not from chlorine, it's from urine. How do you feel about that, Lenny? Man, that really pisses me off. <laughs> Lenny Love. <laughs> greatest guy ever, greatest guy ever. <laughs> Stay with me. There's a new ride-sharing app uh, that allows people under the age of seven to hail a ride. Yeah. yeah. What you do is you log onto the app. Um, the kid hails a ride, a van comes, and then you never see your kids again. <laughs> well, yeah, we, could. we got a great show for you guys tonight. Well, let's give it away to the best DJ in town, Lenny Alfonso.
Welcome back. I just want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by Rachel's Kitchen, located downtown right here at the Ogden and also at the Lou Ruvu Brain Center for Health. Now, I have the pleasure of getting to introduce you to one who has her hands in many fashion endeavors, including the nonprofit Fashion Artist Guild, a custom tailoring company, Couture Slave, and the fashion business magazine, Parlay. Please welcome Deborah Harris. Woo! Welcome. Thank you for joining us today, Thank you Deborah. For I know you're me. a busy woman. I only named yes. a handful of things that you're involved in. A handful. And you're involved in many <laughs> more, but let's just start with your nonprofits. Okay. So what do you do, what got you involved in these and why? Okay, so long story short, my background is nowhere near fashion. It's like way left field pre-med biology. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not using that degree at all, clearly. Um, but um, my sister actually was the one who wanted to start off in fashion, and so I moved here from Chicago, and I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna see how bright you are and see if we can do this. And so we started off with um, just working with um, individuals on like a styling basis, stuff like that. And then we decided to have our first runway show. Okay. And it was at the Arts Factory. It was in the patio before it was bar and bistro. It was just dirt and chairs. So before it's all Even fancy better, now, yeah. you know, so. And then we had a following show that fall. And so we had started, you know, making clothes for people. And that's where we started our small business, Couture Slave. And so one student from a local high school, SWCTA, I believe, saw the show and was like, oh, can you come to our school and help us out in our programming? My professor would love you. And we were like, oh, my God. Awesome. So we went in and we really got to see like ground level, like what the talent looks like in the industry here, like fresh, like raw talent. And I got to tell you, we were like amazed. These students were making textiles by themselves. We're like, I don't even, yeah. I barely know so, how to spell textiles. So you're so. coming in on a consulting and stylist uh, kind of angle instead yeah. of actually designing yourself at that point? Well, we were doing both. both. Okay. We were doing both. And then we started working in high school and then the college. And then we stepped back and we looked at what the needs were for the industry, for these students and emerging designers. So how, does, how did these programs actually help the students or people interested in really diving into fashion? Well, um, actually, aside from Fashion Artists Guild Incorporated, you know, there are other organizations here like Las Vegas Fashion Design Council, Las Vegas Fashion Council, um, but we really want to focus on career and economic development. You know, building out interning opportunities, career opportunities, job placement, things right, like that. Right, nobody tells you that. You say, I want to be an artist, I want to be a fashion designer, yes. and you do it, and then what? You I mean, it's, it's difficult because we have a lot of talented people that are in the hobby phase, okay? How do we take you from the hobby phase to start making some money? Right, right. So, right. I mean, it's, it's been a challenge, but we are still working diligently in this area to really get them to the next level where they can make some dollars and cents, make this hobby, this talent work for them. And you've rolled that into a new magazine as well, correct? Well, actually, yeah. Um, my partner is in the audience today. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, met this crazy person earlier this year and um, I was referred and referred and referred and he was starting um, a magazine called Parlay Magazine. It was all about the business of fashion and I was literally someone that they called in to say who's who in Las Vegas? What are they doing? And got to talking with him and lo and behold I started writing for Parlay and then I started partnering with him in other business endeavors and so it really just kind of culminated into this really awesome thing. You know so I, I love writing and Never thought I'd be writing, but. So you've submerged yourself in the culture here in downtown Las Vegas through fashion. <laughs> what are some of the trends that you love right now? And what is something that you hate to see? Um, I don't really have love hates. Um, I'm glad culottes are coming back. Okay. Because um, I kind of like culottes. <laughs> I'm an 80s baby. Um, but um, I'm over the bodycon dresses. Okay. Like, and I'm right. just like, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. You know, um, I used to be really conservative in my dress. And, you know, as a woman, our styles, they, they morph like every five, seven years we change. And so, I mean, I, I'm over that. But I, I like seeing women that their looks are eclectic and they look comfortable. It's like you can tell who they are by how right. they dress. So I really don't have a love-hate, but I love it when I see a woman or a man and I can immediately tell almost who they are by what they have on. Okay, so. yeah, fashion defines you, right? Yes. Okay, where can people find you? If they want to look you up on Facebook, where can they find your magazine? Um, ParleyMagazine.com, Parley Magazine on Facebook, um, Fashion Artist Guild, Inc. 
on Facebook, and I believe our Twitter handle, forgive me, I'm so bad with social media. I need another me, so anybody, anybody, I swear, we'll go places. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we have, and where's, <laughs> where's Kyle? Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> there's hey. Kyle, he's our social media guy, Kyle. he's great. I and might he, need your help. He, does, he has a whole new business about homegrown businesses here in Las Vegas, oh, too, awesome. so you guys gotta get together and talk. But yeah, we're, we're all on Facebook, so, or just find me on the street or something. Send all up right. a smoke signal, I'll be there. All right, well, I'm sure we'll see more of you. Thank Yay. you for coming on the show Thank today. You we so appreciate much. you. Awesome. All right. And up next, we have Dylan with Auntie Dinafario. <laughs> up next, we have Tushay Say It Again. Okay. <laughs> Can we get we to the final question? Oh, fine. This is Bonnie with My Vagabond Soul, and we want to know, what is your dream and how are you chasing it? Follow us as we interview dreamers of all walks of life, entrepreneurs, musicians, artists, and much more. Hear more about this interview with Craw and the Salvation Highway Band. Well, songwriting and playing music is my passion. I want to inspire others that come from struggle to chase their dreams and one day make it become a reality. For this interview with My Vagabond Soul co-founder and artist, Kat Ford. I started writing children's books to encourage kids of all ages to chase their dreams. We believe in chasing our dreams and want to inspire you. So visit us at myvagabondsoul.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Because now that you know your dream, it's time to start chasing it. you guys all right well you guys will love the next segment especially if you're a little bit of a nerd because we have somebody coming on to talk about an amazing open source project called ethereum now what ethereum does is it takes the same kind of concepts that make bitcoin so powerful and it exposes them through an api for developers to build all sorts of different things on and it's a really amazing thing once you get your head around it so we brought someone on to really explain how it works uh, from the open source project ethereum which raised 18 million dollars crowdfunding, the second most in history. So put your hands together for Anthony D'Onofrio. Come on out. What up? How's life? Hey. Strong whiskey. Thanks a lot, yeah. She so said, like, give me double. three shots and pour it together into... I, said, I think I said, uh, give me a whiskey and Coke, and I got a double. <laughs> and he's like, um, you just mean double whiskey, right? That's the bartender. Here. If you're going to get, you know, if you're going to do something, don't know how fast it. I got, I got something for you. I got you a little Ethereum pen. Oh, really? Yeah, I got you a gift. I know people give you gifts because I've seen you before. Yeah. So it's a oh, thing. very cool. Very Star trek -y. Also, uh, <laughs> they said drinking and fun. So I thought because we're going to be, be talking about something so nerdy, Maybe uh, we could have a drinking game. Like when I say something really nerdy, you take a drink. So oh, yeah. Ethereum, what makes Bitcoin special? Like how do you sum that up? Bitcoin? Yeah. Um, what makes that different from a, a normal currency? So the reason that Bitcoin was a uh, really interesting technology is because it was the first time that someone figured out really how to make uh, distributed uh, uh, technology um, that could be a store of value um, that you couldn't double spend, right? So in instead of being able to uh, like copy and paste right. something like a file on your computer. Right, that's how I was imagining it, like a JPEG on my desktop, I just cut and paste it, yeah. I'm rich, right? So how do, you have, how do you have digital money yeah. uh, and that people can't just copy infinitely? Because part of the uh, allure of technology is that it's this space uh, that's, that's basically infinite. And right. uh, so they solved that problem. And uh, it, it was crazy, you know, uh, a few years ago it was worth nothing. And then at its peak, um, you know, just over a year ago, it was worth $1,200. Yeah. Uh, somebody bought a pizza once for 10,000 Bitcoin. Yeah, I know about the famous pizza. That's incredible. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's okay, pretty so, crazy. Okay, so the double spin problem yeah. is solved. What made uh, you think that something like Ethereum needed to be done? Like, what, what else can it be used for? So uh, a kid, he was, he was, I think, 19 at the time, named Vitalik Buterin. Uh, wrote a white paper on Ethereum, and uh, I had been I had been thinking I'm not that interested in money. I'm not interested in Bitcoin as a currency, but I kind of had the insight that this technology could be used for uh, more generalized social purposes, and so I kind of reached out to a few people. And Vitalik had just released his paper, uh, so I read it and I just said, "This is it. We got You know, I got to be a part of it." But Bitcoin's very limiting. It's it's 
it's a thing you can send to other people. That's it, like, hey, does this have value to you? This has value to me. Um, but to me, it's kind of like somebody built uh, an arcade token for, okay. the, for the internet. So it's like if you went into Chuck E. Cheese and the only thing you could do is exchange your money for tokens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you couldn't do anything with them except for hand them to somebody right. else. Right, you can't play yeah. Killer Instinct, then what's the point? No, it's, so it's totally useless. And a few people came up with some ideas that were, that were like, uh, you know, what would we like to do? What would we like to do with the token? Let's add some, some different ec economic layers. And Vitalik just said, let's just let anybody build whatever they want on it. Uh, and so it, you know, when, when Vitalik wrote the paper, he thought two or three people were going to read it, and then that was it. And I thought, you know, it wouldn't be that big. $18 million dollars come in crowdfunding. $18 million dollars later. Yeah. I mean, there were eight of us in a Skype chat. And then at the end of that month, there were 150. The end of the next month, there were 300. We had 600. We have over 50 meetups uh, around the world with over 3,000 people. We, we are not launched yet, which is just like <laughs> the dream for a startup, yeah, that's crazy. right? OK, so what are they building? Like, I just want to know, like, what are they building? If there's all these meetups and everybody's talking about it, what are they doing? So they're building the software for the network. And we're, we're doing uh, a few different. Um, or, or, or like, what are the people, like at the meetups, like, what are the things people are building with the API? Oh, what are, thing, what are the things people are building with it? Um, so a lot of different things. Somebody uh, built a door. So you can like, send money to the door, and the door automatically opens. Um, oh. oh, you should talk about your car thing next. But anyways, keep the car thing. Yeah, sure. I'll talk about t autonomous cars and autonomous hotels. Yeah. But uh, actually, one of the biggest things that's happening is IBM is doing a, pro a program called Adept. Okay. Um, and it's basically they're using Ethereum to power the Internet of Things. So in the future, when, uh, uh, you know, when your refrigerator needs to order more milk, uh, it might do that on the Ethereum network uh, if IBM has anything to do with it, which oh, is kind of okay. amazing, right? Right, it makes um, sense to them because it's not owned by any other place. It's a platform the community trusts. Yeah, and so you, you were asking about the car thing, and this is where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they could just, they're like alive, right? So it's actually cool and nerdy. So you guys have heard of self driving cars, right? So that's going to be a big thing. But what happens when your self driving car can hold its own account balance? So you actually don't need anyone to own the car, the car can own itself. Um, the car can drive around. It can put money in its own bank account in, in, uh, in exchange for giving rides. It can have a little error sensor that then tells it to drive to, uh, to get Next fixed. Spot, yeah. uh, it could call a tow truck. It could do all this, and no one will own it. All of the self-driving cars of the future could be self-owned in the sense that they so can So like no cab company, no personal owner like with Uber. You're saying the car just... Nobody owns it, right? So you and cut then, all the middlemen out. Right, and then you're saying, like, and if it kills someone, then you said it can buy its own insurance. It can pay its own insurance premiums yeah. and everything. Which is weird, because then it got me thinking, like, if robots and cars in the future don't have owners, I, I don't know. That, that just, it just took me a second, because I was like, who would be responsible? I feel like a human would be responsible if a robot goes AWAC. But then I was like, oh, I guess if the, if the robot bought itself freedom Who knows? or whatever, like, yeah, I don't all, know. All I can say is that the future is potentially very weird. And yeah. if the present is any indication, I would say it's definitely going to be weird. Um, I mean, and that doesn't end with cars. You could do it with a hotel. A hotel could have awareness of its Yelp review. And it could, if, if it gets a lot of reviews that the rooms are dirty, it could post a Craigslist ad and then hire oh, trying to improve its cleaning staff or buy some Roombas. Exactly. Roombas. And Probably it could even put out yeah. bounties for people to improve its algorithm if it starts getting better Yelp reviews based on algorithms that people submit to it. Then it's leveraging humans to make itself better. Uh, it's a weird. I don't know. I should have brought my own whiskey. You should have. Can I have a sip of that? Yeah, you need to take just, a sip. For... I'm, I know that this stuff is nerdy, and I'm not Ooh, seeing strong. a whole lot of this. Um, Uh-oh. I have a cold. I didn't think about that. It's Don't drink now. that. It's yours I just, now. I was, yeah, I, I, that was really rude. I'm going to buy you one right after because no, I didn't think about is, that. No, the thing is, I'm here to grant wishes, obviously. I wish okay. I had my own. Yeah, okay. easy. Um, I owe you though. That was, that was. I'm just going to hold this. That was a good idea. Okay. Because they don't know this, but I live here. I'm like a resident grill master at oh, the yeah, Airstream. Yeah. yeah. So we, we filmed that at Airstream. So a lot yeah. of the audience has been down there before. And, yeah, and I agreed um, to be on this because we were just chatting one day, and then your, I saw your burger, and you were like, yeah. You believe in the singularity, yeah. whoever you are? And I was yeah. like, yeah, I do. We're building it. Uh, <laughs> and then I said, I'll be on your podcast. And then I saw it that Thursday. And I was like, I just agreed to be on a TV show. Great. It's good. Um, you look great. You, you clean up well. Thank you. Thank you. You yeah. think I would usually roll in the mud day to day. but <laughs> OK. Um, um, so uh, ethdev.org, I believe, is the website. Is then, then you have the blog that you're running. Too. So ethdev.org, and we, we as a community have put together uh, 
a website called ethereum101.org. And that's just for people to come and kind of like a quick, quick interface with tutorials, uh, videos, um, quick links to the community and things like that just to get, get people kind of uh, quickly into it. So yeah, I mean, if you're into nerdy stuff and want to be like, you know, some, was a 92 in the internet when people are like, <laughs> what's the internet? And they're mocking it. Right. I would say if not Ethereum, you know, I, it's hard for me to drink Kool-Aid. Ethereum's cool. But 20 years from now, this is the technology that will we, run everything. So, so then the band that's going to come up next is called the All Togethers. Yeah. Really popular, cool, like, cello e bass thing. Sure. Uh, no, I don't drink that. It's fine. I'm going to get you another, here, but I like, really don't want you to sing. I'll just play with these. What, uh, what's something they could do with Ethereum? Like, so that's actually I, I didn't even ask you that. But so like, the, when I first got into technology, uh, I was like 16, and I built what ended up being something like MySpace. Yeah. about four years before MySpace came out. So my interest personally, I'm a musician as well, so I haven't really been wrapping my head around what the future of music is going to be. But if I look really far, I think it's not inconceivable that there are really interesting things that are going to happen with music. Um, things like now when you pirate music, the artist doesn't get any money. But what if in the future, instead of it being illegal, uh, you could just see that people are listening to this music, and it can just credit their accounts. Right, and you can do something and like So that. Like, yeah. you have mining in Bitcoin, or you have mining in Ethereum, where how is the currency generated? And it's mm -hmm. generated through mathematical equations, but what if it was generated through creating value in the world, and you can see that by mapping oh, the peer-to-peer -peer network? Yeah. And we so, talked about because Bitcoin wastes so much energy with that algorithm. Huge right, amount yeah. of energy. Anyways, yeah, for so. over time, so I can't kill on that. But, it's okay, uh, great. Um, but it is really interesting, and I think that's an awesome project. So everybody, check out FDev, check out Ethereum, um, and get ready, because after this break, we're going to come right back with the All Togethers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good. No, I love this thing. Uh, you can get more information at thealltogethers.com, thealltogethers.com. Uh, they're known as the purveyors of hillbilly jazz. Ladies and gentlemen, the All Togethers. <laughs> Is that yours? Cool. Yeah. I like them. They're all together, everyone. Yeah.
That's our show tonight. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all that downtown podcast. Have a good night. Yeah.